now we want to kind of talk about actually a somewhat different circuit that I, as opposed to sort of the original four basic uh, circuit topologies that you're using. Now we're going to talk about what is typically called a differential pair. And now this is really the first real circuit that has two transistors in terms of how its operation is behaving. You might argue two transistors right here and right here, plus a current source. Now I'm drawing the current source transistor as an explicit device. But it does actually allow you to see that you, now we, things get a little more interesting, a little more opportunity in terms of what we're putting together. So when you look at this, you go, well, what's going on in the circle? I have an, two inputs, which I need, labeled here plus and minus input, which kind of gives you a sense that we're probably going to care about that difference. Uh, but for the moment, assume them as two inputs, and then they have two corresponding currents that are going through their transistor, the I out plus and I out minus. And what's interesting is these are tied such that those currents are actually going to sum up to equal one current in a current source. So what I've effectively done is that the sum of those currents have got to be constant to that bias current. And in some sense now these gate voltages are going to select which one, you know, how much is going through each of those ideas. So in some sense you could think about it as a current normalizer, but there's a lot of different dynamics here. So when you start with this, you think, okay, let me actually look at what's going on. And there's one node here, one free parameter we haven't talked about in the circle. It's always a good thing to look for. Is this voltage in between? It's the source voltage. And that's the free parameter that allows you to change what the behavior of the circuit is to actually, you know, get the current so that way the current is going to be fixed. And that's actually a very big deal. So solving for V is actually a very critical question. Um, and actually, when you look at solving for it, uh, you get actually a very nice response. Now, initially, you would start off by saying these two currents have to equal the bias current. And I will get two currents here that basically give me an idea in, in a very simple form of what the currents are through those devices. And notice it's both the input voltages as well as that middle node V. And what you find is that middle node V will actually try to go to the largest We'll try to respond primarily to the larger of the two inputs. And if the two are relatively equal, then it's going to be about the same. And we're going to talk a lot about these kinds of circuits in different places. One of the places that it often comes out is when you start talking about, I want to make a circuit that does a comparison. And if I had multiple inputs, this is actually a very nice way to talk about saying which is the largest of n inputs. Very useful technique. But once I've figured that out, I can solve for V by summing that up in terms of its bias current. And the net result is I get this kind of messy looking expression, which I can simplify slightly to being a bi I bias current of 1 over 1 plus kappa times some terms over UT. Now for those of you who kind of remember device physics, you'll probably remember there was something called a Boltzmann distribution function. And it actually has the same exact functional form that goes between 0 and 1 where at one point there'll have be no current, in the other case it'll, it'll actually be all of the bias current. And when I look at I, I out minus, I get actually the exact uh, inverted expression. Not surprising, because the sum of these two have to be equal. And so this expression turns out to be quite useful. I could also imagine then saying, let me take the two of these and take the difference, which is often something we want to do with a circuit like this. So if I take the difference of those two outputs, one of the things I will then see is then I will actually get this function which is a hyperbolic tangent. And this is actually a very useful function. Uh, a nice function typically goes from minus 1 to 1. Uh, if I were to just do some nice algebra, what I would find is it would be hyperbolic tangent of kappa vn plus or minus vn minus over 2 times ut. So I got an extra factor 2 in there, which is kind of interesting, kind of nor in some sense normalizing out the strength on, on the input voltages. And I care about this kind of functional form because often I care about putting this into a transistor circuit. Now is a differential pair, as you saw over here, plus a current mirror. And the current mirror now actually allows me to take this IL plus and make a copy of it and bring it here into I out minus. And so that way now if this output node is held at a fixed potential, the sum of those currents, which is effectively a difference, Give, is the output current. So I actually compute this directly, which is really kind of a neat function. And if you're wondering what this looks like when you were to experimentally measure it, here's one just representative differential pair. If I look at the output, you know, the current that would be from the plus side, it gives me a typical tangent curve going through zero. I out minus does the reverse, and it's a very nice, well-controlled structure. If I were to actually look at what is the 
difference of those curves coming out of, say, a structure like this, I actually see what is a typical tanj function. And what's beautiful about a tanj function is notice near zero, it really looks like a straight line. It is approximately a straight line. But then if you go too far, it just kind of curls on both directions. It almost looks like it goes, I can't go any further, I can't push any further. And we see tangents used a lot in modeling physical experiments and for exactly these reasons. So this gives you a sense in terms of what some of these devices will look like, but this is a very powerful circuit that we're going to use again and again and again.